Praise the Lord. We are in the river of life. And there's a spirit of grief on me. And as I was reading the Bible, there was a scripture that said that God was going to cause your grieving to cease, that you would grieve no more. And that's what the Lord said to me. And as I read that scripture, that I would grieve no more, all of a sudden something lifted off of me and I felt a lightness. And the spirit of the Lord is going to deliver you from whatever you are going through. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. Hallelujah. He will give you beauty for ashes. That darkness, he's going to bring light into that situation. He's going to turn all those negative things around by his power, by his spirit. As I was driving to the studio today, I heard a song and it said, he is making a masterpiece out of you. A masterpiece. A masterpiece takes a long time to make. It takes very careful planning and detail and just how it, looking at it and, and see what can be done to make it even more beautiful, more usable. Whatever it is, a masterpiece is one in a million, is something that is exceptional and wonderful and great. And the Lord is making a masterpiece out of you. You've gone through the trials and the tribulations. You've endured. You've persevered. The Lord is making a masterpiece out of you. But at the same time, it says, let patience have its perfect work. That if God has shut a door or not given you favor, you don't throw a tantrum. You don't act like a spoiled brat. Somebody asked me about somebody the other day, and I just said, well, he's a brat. You know, because he didn't get what he wanted. He's throwing a tantrum. Hallelujah. He wanted something that the Lord didn't want for him, and now he's just being a brat. And now he's just rebelling and just throwing a tantrum. So we can't be Christians who are brats. We have to humble ourselves and trust God in everything when he opens a door and when he shuts a door. And I wanted to read from Deuteronomy um, Hallelujah, chapter 1, verse 21. It says, Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. God has set that land of blessing before you. God has set that vision, that dream, that miracle, that healing, whatever it is that you desire according to his will. Go up and possess it. Maybe your vision and your dream is a television ministry. Go up and possess it. Hallelujah. Maybe it's to minister and sing for the Lord. Go up and possess it. Maybe it's to get married and have children. If God has put someone in your life and he's saying that's your husband, then go and marry them and move forward in the Lord. The Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. And the Israelites had to go and fight and take the land. We're going to take the land that God has given us. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has said to you. As God has said to you. As God has spoken to you. And nowadays... People are being laid, um, hallelujah, people are having hands laid on them and people are prophesying. Everybody has a word from God. Everyone knows the vision. Everyone knows the dream. Hallelujah. As the Lord God of your fathers has said to you, fear not, neither be discouraged. Do not fear do not be afraid and don't be discouraged. And why did he say don't be discouraged? Because you are going to have a lot of opportunities to be discouraged. People aren't going to treat you right. People aren't going to see your vision or understand your vision or help you with your vision. People are going to be mean to you and jealous and try to lie about you and put you down. The enemy is going to try to attack your body with sickness and divorce and, and death of loved ones. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But he says... Fear not. Don't be discouraged in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads and pray. Hallelujah. 
Oh, God, I lift up those listening right now. Father God, you have given them a dream, a vision. They have prophecies that have not come to pass yet. In the name of Jesus, we take back what has been stolen from the body of Christ. We take back health in Jesus' name. We rebuke every spirit of infirmity, Father God, and even as that infirmity hasn't lifted, Father God, help your people to press through. Help your people not to give up. Even when they don't feel well, Father God, help them to continue to break through in the spirit and minister your word. Let them not allow that sickness or that infirmity to stop them because the Lord says the power of God is on your side. He he will open doors for you. He will prepare hearts for the words that you will speak. But do not allow that sickness to stop you or discourage you or make you feel less than, hallelujah, or even make you believe that God will not accomplish his will for your life. But go forth in his power and in his glory and in his grace. Thank you, Father God, that you have set the land before us. And even with all of our weaknesses, even with all of our infirmities, we're going to go in and possess the land in the name of Jesus. We're not going to fear. We're not going to be discouraged. We're not going to give up. We're not going to be despondent in the name of Jesus. And the Lord was showing me that he is raising up his people in great strength and power that nothing will stop them from going forth and possessing the land and fighting for the kingdom of God and the will of God. Stand up, stand up in Jesus' name. David's mighty men, hallelujah, they would not back down. They fought, hallelujah. One man fought until his hand was stuck to the sword. And he fought hard, and he was hot, and he was tired, and he was weary, but he won the battle. So we're going to fight in the spirit. We're going to war in the spirit, and we are going to win the battle. And I command every spirit of suicide to be broken in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no right to be there. You've been there for a long time, even from childhood. But I break that spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is raising up a mighty and a strong people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in Deuteronomy 1, verse 29, actually 28, Where shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims. So now the Israelites didn't want to go in the, to possess the land that the Lord had given them because the people's words had discouraged their hearts. Our brethren have discouraged our heart. The words that you speak are so powerful. Speak words of life. Speak words of encouragement. And then all of a sudden, hallelujah, they looked at how great the enemy was. They looked at the fact that there were giants in the land. But you have the greatest giant on your side. You have the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the power of the living God on your side. No giant can stand before the power of God and you represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I said to you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. And a lot of people suffer from fear and shyness, fear of rejection, fear of being turned down. And the Lord wants to heal that. And it's a daily battle. But continue to overcome and continue to trust God. And sometimes when you have that great fear, you're hearing the voice of God. The enemy's trying to bring that fear. And out of obedience to God, you overcome the fear and you do it. And you do what God has spoken to you to do. And it is a great victory because you're not walking in the flesh and you're overcoming a great attack of the enemy. The Lord your God which goes before you. Know that the Lord your God goes before you. He is opening doors ahead of you. No open door for ministry is an accident. Your God goes ahead of you, preparing the way for you. He shall 
fight for you. He shall fight for you. He goes before you to fight for you. He will vindicate you. Hallelujah. He will proclaim your innocence. He will destroy the enemy that lays in wait for you. Hallelujah. According to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you have seen how the Lord your God bore you as a man does bear his son in all the way that you went until you came into this place. Hallelujah. We have to remember what the Lord has done, that he parted the Red Sea, that he brought the plagues upon Pharaoh. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He can work that miracle. He can bring those finances. He can make a way where there is no way. Be it done unto you according to your faith. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God. In this thing, you didn't believe that God was going to do it. In this situation where God said, go, you didn't believe. Who went in the way before you to search you out a place, to pitch your tents in, in fire by night, to show you by what way you should go, and in a cloud by day. The Lord so lovingly protected the children of Israel. The Lord gave them a cloud by day and a fire by night. He led them. He showed them where to pitch their tents. Nothing is happenstance. Everything happens for a purpose and for a reason that he will be glorified, that he will be honored, that we will know him more. Hallelujah. That we will be even strengthened as we break through in the spirit. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was angry. The Lord heard the Israelites. He saw their doubt. He saw their lack of faith. He saw their not acting on his word, their lack of obedience, their disobedience. He saw that, and it made him angry. Don't doubt the Lord. Don't doubt his promises. God is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly greater than you could ask for, think of, or imagine according to the power that works in you. So right now, the Lord spoke to me and he said, start believing again. Start hoping again. Start having faith again that God will bring you a life of love and joy and peace and fun and romance and blessing and prosperity and abundance that you will have so much to look forward to. Believe God that he will open those doors again. Right now, let faith arise in your heart. You may be on that sickbed. The Lord says he's going to heal you. He's going to help you. He's going to be with you, and he's going to encourage you. Deuteronomy 1.35, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swore to give to your fathers. The Lord was really speaking to me. There are people in your past who you knew for a long time, but they are not going to go into that promised land with you, that they were not able to show character. They were not able to show that they were worthy to enter into the promised land. Many people have left you along the way, and now God is opening that door for that promised land, for that increase, for that blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But many will not go with you that you thought would always go with you because they were distracted by the enemy, because they followed their own desires, because they were looking out for their own fleshly needs instead of looking out for the things of God. Except Caleb. Caleb was going to go into the promised land, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he has trodden upon, and to his children, because he has wholly followed the Lord. The Lord is looking for people who will wholly follow him, 100%. 
not afraid to preach on Facebook to their secular friends as well as their Christian godly friends. I know people who have a lot of secular friends and they are afraid to share something that is Christian. Is that really holy following the Lord if you are ashamed to put what you believe in on Facebook or on Instagram because they may reject you or you may offend them or they may unfriend you or they may not think you're cool. No, those people are not wholly following the Lord. The Lord said, Caleb is wholly following me. Even Moses didn't enter into the promised land. Aaron didn't enter into the promised land. God raised up Joshua instead of Moses and Aaron. We don't want to, hallelujah, go through that wilderness for 40 years and pay the price and then never get into the promised land. Now is the home stretch. Now is the final sprint. When I was in ninth grade, I used to run cross country, and I got most valuable player on the varsity team in ninth grade. Hallelujah. I thought I was going to die. We only had to run two miles at that point, but I was like dying. But then there was this sprint at the end, and you think that you can't do it, but all of a sudden you see the finish line, and you see people cheering you on, and all of a sudden you just run as hard as you can, even though you're tired, you're exhausted. Hallelujah. You're breathing heavily. You think you're going to die. You think you have nothing left in you, but you keep on running that race until you pass that finish line and there are times where the Lord calls us to run as fast as we can to that finish line when we have nothing left when we have absolutely nothing left to give he says get up and go in my name for I will give you the power and the grace and the glory hallelujah I will bless you and I will strengthen you and I will lead you hallelujah you know it's really funny Praise Jesus. I was just a ninth grader, and there was an 11th grader who everybody oohed and awed over. And as I'm running, you know, sprinting down the, to the finish line, I actually passed her in the end. And she wasn't really happy about that. But you know what? You're going to pass people who are older, who tell you how great they are, who pretend to be wiser than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to pass those around you. You're going to surpass those around you. But keep on running. Keep on going also the Lord was angry with me for your sake saying you also shall not go in but Joshua the son of Nun who stands before you he shall go in encourage him for he shall cause Israel to inherit it Joshua is going to be the leader. We need good leaders. You need to find people who are preaching the word of God, who are not walking in the flesh, who are living God's word. When you're in first grade, you want a good first grade teacher to lay that foundation of English language arts and reading and comprehension. Hallelujah. The same is for the Bible. You want to follow people who are humble who are seeking the face of God, who are moving in the gifts of the Spirit, who believe everything that this word says. Moreover, your little ones, which you said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in, and to them will I give it, and they shall possess it. So they were saying, oh, our little ones are going to become a prey. We can't go into that promised land. We're going to be defeated, right? Hallelujah. Our little ones are going to be destroyed. He said, no, they are the very ones who are going to go in and possess the land. But those who are 20 years old and over, and Joshua, excuse me, and Moses and Aaron will not go in to possess the land. God has given you that land. It's in front of you. Start small with that seed. Start somewhere, and God will cause it to grow more and more and more. But as for you, turn and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then you answered and said to me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord your God commanded us. And when you had girded on every man his weapons of war, you were ready to go up to the hill. And the Lord said to me, Say to them, Go not up, neither fight. I am not among you, lest you be smitten before your enemy. So don't make God mad. You know, once you really offend somebody and they've cut you off, 
it's pretty much over. Well, God was angry. God was upset. Now they were saying, oh, oh, it's okay. We'll do it. God said, no, it's too late. I am not going to be with you. You have to do it on God's terms and God's way. Hallelujah. It's not your terms and it's not your way. So you need to humble yourself before the Lord. Hallelujah. Take it down a notch and seek his face. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We just thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Karabashia. Isaiah 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says your God. The Lord is going to bring comfort. The Lord is going to bring joy. He's going to take away that loneliness and that pain. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So the Lord brought judgment upon Israel. And we can see that this is uh, the, when Babylon came, Nebuchadnezzar came, and the Israelites were brought into Babylonian captivity, the Lord brought judgment upon Israel, but now the Lord says that he's going to comfort them. You've had great trials, you've had great tribulations, but the Lord says, I will comfort you, I will bless you, I will minister to you. And Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine! For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise, get up, hallelujah, go. Don't stay in that bed, hallelujah. Don't stay cast down and cast off. Get up in the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God. Go forward. You are doing a mighty work for God. We are built on each other. You are faithful in your area. Hallelujah. And someone else is faithful in their area and this area and that area. And coming together, we have a whole. Be faithful in the little and God will give you much. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Gross darkness is covering the people. But this is the time when the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. The glory of the Lord will be seen upon your countenances. Hallelujah. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. Don't be afraid of their faces. Just keep your eyes on the Lord. He will bless you. He will open doors for you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light. The Lord is going to bring people to you. Just the other day, hallelujah, on Facebook Messenger, um, a little gal was so sweet, praise God, but she was healing from a self-inflicted wound because she was trying to commit suicide. And I led her in the sinner's prayer on Facebook Messenger. She asked Jesus in her heart. She watched my church meeting this past Monday. She said she watched it twice. Hallelujah. And she was praying to God. She was doing warfare. She was fighting in the spirit that the chains would be broken. God is going to bring people to you. The Lord just brought that person who was ready. And the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. The Lord is saying, I'm going to bring people to you. I'm going to bring people in your life that are supposed to be there, not the ones who are not going to enter into the promised land, not the ones who are not wholly falling at, following after him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Go and enter into that promised land. Don't worry about those ones who are doing other things. Hallelujah, who have to do this, who have to do that first but enter in to the promised land. Let's bow our heads and pray. 
God, I just thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing, Father God. You have put that promised land in front of us, and we're going to go in and possess it. Father God, bring those people around us who are holy following you, who are dead to the flesh, who are not compromised, Father God, who are seeking your face with all their heart and all their mind and all their soul. Jesus, strengthen your body right now. Heal broken hearts. Heal those who have been abused. Heal those who are in pain, who are suffering right now in Jesus' name. And I rebuke that spirit of doubt. God, we believe. We believe in the name of Jesus that you are moving mightily in our lives and in our hearts and we give you all the glory and we thank you lord we thank you for what you're doing thank you lord you're answering that prayer it looks impossible it looks like there are giants in the land but we know that you are going ahead of us and you are fighting for us we don't have to fight this battle we don't have to vindicate ourselves hallelujah you are fighting for us and you are moving every obstacle out of the way thank you lord Thank you, Lord. Just receive that healing power. Hallelujah. Just let the Lord touch you. Let him minister to you right now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is good. If you want to get in touch with me, you can go to GemmaWinger.com. I have meetings on Monday nights and Friday nights. We Facebook Live them at 7.30 p.m. If you want to come, go to that address on Facebook. Every Wednesday, I'm on Cross TV, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can go to thecrosstv.com to look at archived shows. Saturday nights at 11 p.m., kkla.com, 99.5 FM in the greater Los Angeles area. Saturdays at 11 p.m. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you so much. You can go to YouTube. Put in my name, Gemma Winger. You can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch my music videos as well as more archived shows. So we're going to close with my latest music video, Make Me New. Lord, make us new. God bless you. I love you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. Make me new. Lord Jesus, make me new. For I find that in so many ways I'm not enough like you. Take this weary vessel that I have and mold me once again. Take my heart, take my spirit, make me new. Make me new, Lord Jesus, make me new. For I find that in so many ways I'm not enough like you. Take this weary vessel that I am and mold me once again. Take my heart, take my spirit, make me new. Make me new, Lord Jesus, make me new. For I find that in so many ways I'm not enough like you. Take this weary vessel that I am and mold me once again. Take my heart, take my spirit, make me new. Take my heart, take my spirit, make me new. Take my heart, take my spirit, make me new.